Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage from IBM Edge 2015. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon. Uh, really pleased to have with me, I've got Ross Mori, who's the general manager of Z Systems uh, with IBM, and also Donna Dillon, uh, Dillenberger, sorry, uh, IBM fellow. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. Hello, Stu. Hey, Stu, happy to be here. All right, so, so Ross, uh, you know, Dave and the team caught up with you at the Z13 launch earlier this year. I guess start with us. What, what's been the client reaction? You know, what, what's happened between that launch in New York City and, and, and now? Well, the client reaction has been phenomenal worldwide. You probably saw some of our first quarter results, 130% year-to-year growth. That's great. Um, to me, more importantly, you know, we spent the last five years co-creating the Z13 with clients and now I'm, I'm positive that this reaction is because we work so closely with them to really meet their needs now and for the future. Anyway, the reaction's been fantastic. All right, so, so Donna, you know, one of the things, I, I guess it shouldn't have been surprising to me, but you know, you kind of listen to some of the industry conversation, it's like, you know, a mainframe and power, you know, they've been around for a while, we've got, you know, it's cloud and big data, and you know, heck, Docker is like the hottest thing out there, and it's like, well, Come on, we can do you know Linux on Z. We can do containers on Z. Uh, and you know you're running the research on this. You know how does how does IBM keep you know something that no offense is an older technology keep it fresh, new, and and driving forward? Yeah, uh, the the good thing about the mainframe is that uh, we take something that's new and we provide the grown up version of it. At IBM Research, we provided the the Docker uh, container for Z and uh, the Docker container on Z is scalable. You could, you could put thousands of containers on Z, and we're also uh, making sure that it's secure. So the, the grown-up version is a version that uh, you could have more of and that people can't break into. Yeah, <laughs> I have a comment, please. So, comment. so you mentioned that the, you commented the technology's old. It's what's what's old, or it's been around, is the architecture, right? That's why all those applications still run. Actually, the technology in Z13 is all absolutely state of the art. I mean, that's a casters up design, more than 500 new patented technologies in there. I mean, I'll take on anybody on a discussion on modern technology and it's in Z13. Yeah, right? I, I, absolutely. You bring up a great point there. It, it, it's funny. It's you talk about branding. Most people right. think when they hear a brand and they're like, "Oh, that that's been around for years." It's like you know the Z13. It's not my father's Cadillac. That's right. <laughs> is, is what that's we're doing. Right. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, one of the questions Dave wanted me to bring up is um, you're bringing transactional data uh, in analytics together. Traditionally, that's been a complete right. no-no. So you know, how that's taboo. How are you doing that now? That's a great <laughs> question. It's one of the reasons I wanted Donna here as well. Well, it's actually really exciting. I mean, for the last you know two decades, right? You know, we've been encouraging people to you know you, your operational data is created on the Z through a tran online transaction processing system. You really care about throughput and response time, but you didn't want to do your queries, your analytics there. You move the data off the platform. Well, we put a lot of effort and innovation into the software and the hardware over the last three years in particular to make it so that you can run your OLTP system. You're not going to affect response time, you're not going to expect, affect throughput, but you can do large queries, you can do what we call in-transaction analytics, so a complex scored analytic uh, that's part of a transaction done in real time. A lot of work went into it, a lot of innovation, and you know, Donna and her team have been at the forefront of these breakthroughs. Yeah, at, at IBM Research, we're, we're putting advanced analytics on Z, things like deep learning, things like cortical learning, things like graph data stores, so the most advanced analytics so that it could run against enterprise data, so the, the data that you really want to see uh, insights on. All right, so, so Donna, it, yeah, I mean, please, no, Russ, go ahead. The yeah. real, and I think the real, it's really cool technology, the business value is using get that insights from your data at the point of the transaction. So while you're doing, signing someone up for a new credit card, or you're doing, a, someone submitting a medical claim, or you've got a transaction going on and you want to do cross-sell, that's the point where you have the, the customer there and that's where we can really make a difference. 
Yeah. Uh, so so uh, I'm wondering if you could help unpack for us a little. So, something I've been looking at the last few years is, you know, we have the great wave of virtualization that came on the x86. Um, there's certain applications that stayed physical. Uh, you know, now there's some new applications that, you know, many of them are physical, some of them are looking at containers, sometimes it's containers on top of virtualization. Uh, you know, what what how do you look at the mainframe and what application portfolio, things like analytics, how does that fit in architecturally? Analytics, you know, is, is a broad spectrum. So, it, when you want, the, when you have to have the analytics uh, change the data, then you want to make sure that data persists, that it's that it's transactional. So, for example, the the new thing now is uh, to read data from flat files. But as computer scientists, we all know that's the worst way to read data because that's just going to incur a lot of I/O. So that's why Hadoop is going out of favor. Apache Spark is coming in to read all the data in memory. When you start reading the data in memory, that's when you really need it to be in containers, to be virtualized. But then what grown-ups are going to realize about Apache Spark and in-memory uh, data is that once the node fails, that, that data and those analytics are going to be gone. So then uh, the next thing is to be able to persist that data automatically. And again, that's where the mainframe comes. We've al we already have an in-memory analytics server. You could save the data transparently, we'll cache the data, we'll cache the, m the most frequent queries in analytics. So your use of analytics is going to cause the, the mainframe to change uh, how the data is transparently persisted for you. Yeah, it, it, if, if I can just poke at that a little bit, because uh, it, it's interesting. We, we sometimes have these pithy little statements we talk about IT, and if you talk about distributed systems, uh, you, you talk about uh, you know things like Netflix. It's you know hardware eventually will fail, and software will eventually work, and you know we expect pieces to fall fail. But I've, I've talked to a lot of Z customers this week, and you know they, they're just like we don't have downtime. You know that's kind of the, the traditional storage world is you know failures are no good, but you know how do you reconcile? Uh, that kind of distributed architecture. You know, we want, need global environments with uh, you know what you're doing. In the distributed architecture world, they they assume that the hardware is going to fail. So th that puts the onus, the burden on the application developer to make sure that you know whatever state they save is going to be sent over to the next uh, uh, next version of the software. In Z, we don't put that onus on the server, uh, on the application owner. We we have these built-in mechanisms to transparently persist the data and load balance the data. So, would you rather spend like 30 or 40 percent of your code? for availability or just focusing on application logic. We, yeah. yeah, Yeah. I mean, in, interesting. Actually, I got, got a note from uh, from the crowd said that, you know, Sysplex was the first large system clustering technology uh, when it was introduced. You know, how are you positioning that today? A parallel Sysplex is alive and well. Yeah. We're, we're providing failover technologies for our Linux on Z systems, which, uh, there, there's, noth there's nothing that compares with the parallel Sysplex on Z. So we're providing that to the Linux world as well. Yeah, I think the important thing that's grown out of Sysplex, especially in the regulated environment of banking today, where they're required to have uptime and backup data centers and all that, extending Sysplex now over geographically dispersed areas, having active-active hot sites, um, that is really, really prevalent. We have more than 750 full customers running fully, you know, geographically dispersed uh, mainframe sysplexes. So it actually is kind of the industry standard, if you would, if you really want uber high availability, super high availability, especially in a regulated environment. All right, so, so Ross, how, how does mobile fit into this whole discussion? That's a great discussion. So, you know, um, see if we've got the transaction systems on these, on these mainframes, right, and everyone has their, Every, every business wants to mobilize their applications, whether it's for their employees in their enterprise or it's to reach their consumers, their, their customers. Um, the tie there, though, is that usually if you want a cool app, you know, you're going to write it a system of engagement, it's going to have a beautiful UI, it's probably going to run out of the cloud, but if you want to do something real with my business, you want to check inventory, you want to check your account balance, you want to transfer money, you want to do a transaction, it's got to go back to the transactional system. So we've built connectors in to make it very easy for mobile app developers, whether they're on-prem or, or in the cloud, to connect to these back-end systems and do it securely, because everybody cares about the security of their personal and their business data. So secure connection, easy to connect in, and the back-end systems are built to scale to any spike that mobile may drive. Okay. 
And and at research uh, for mobile, we've uh, we've ha we've helped build the uh, um, the deterministic random number generator in a uh, in the Z hardware. And what that provides is an unlimited number of random numbers, so that every query in your session could be encrypted. So even if they get the key for the first query, the second query is going to have a, a different key. So Z is a platform where you could have an unlimited number of these random number generators. Okay. Uh, so next thing I want to discuss a little bit is the R and D cycle. So you know, mainframe R and D traditionally takes a long time. We've been trying to shorten, you know, release cycles. How, how does that fit into the, the yeah, conversation? Well, we found we do, we do a lot of things in parallel now, and of course, from a hardware point of view, the old days with five or six passes of hardware and having to do the test that way, we we do a lot in simulation and emulation. So we're really doing two pass designs, but. We really have to have to throttle how often we bring out a new system because can our customers how often can they absorb a new one? So we're on about a two and a half year cycle now, and our customers tell us that's about the right timing for them, and so that's that's what we'll probably be doing for the future. Yeah, and and we also have a beta development sites where we put out code for customers to try on Z, and they they could download that at will, and we we put out like new things for them to just play with, you know multiple times a year. Okay, great. So at the show here, are you, the customers I'm, I'm sure are asking you, you know, what's next, you know, what are you working mm -hmm. on, what are the cool things we should be looking for in the future, you know, what are you telling them? We're, we're working on, uh, on enabling the, the mainframe to try to anticipate um, what your, what patterns you have so that it could help you find um, uh, new patterns for your customers, uh, new insights in their, uh, in their behavior, and also personally uh, looking to see uh, how, you, um, how you use systems, not, not just to extract information, but to also help people become more healthy and help people uh, be more compassionate as well. And um, absolutely, Don, and what I tell people right now is we continue to drive open technologies, um, expand uh, our Linux ecosystem. You know, we have KVM coming as a third virtualization environment for the mainframe, working with OpenStack to make sure that we can be managed uh, properly and fit into the hierarchy. So we're going to continue to drive our Linux environment and our open environment more and more and more because um, uh, uh, it's now 28% uh, of the installed capacity around the world of mainframes is running Linux. So it's a really important open environment today for our customers and I really see a lot of growth there. Yeah, we, yeah, we also have natural language interfaces to the mainframe so people could just type in English questions and then uh, mm. the mainframe will be able to provide the results, you know, just by you, you don't have to be an SQL programmer or a DL1 <laughs> programmer, you could just, you know, talk to it. Wow, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't even know what to say there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, I, I don't see that coming out of Windows. Yeah, it's, it's, so. it's, it's a friendly uh, mainframe, we yeah. call it the mind frame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, 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 so Ross, I guess, you know, one of the things that comes back to our early part of the discussion is, you know, the perception of the mainframe. You know, how how are you shifting that mind frame, uh, that mainframe to, you know, the, the, the happy mainframe? Uh, I, I didn't see a dancing mainframe here at the show. Uh, but, you know, how, how do people understand kind of the mainframe of today and tomorrow? Well, I think what we're trying to do is, well, we show that beautifully designed black box, but I think more importantly, we're trying to position the mainframe in, as part of the mobile app economy, because it is. We're trying to make sure that people know that the mainframe's advanced analytics are superior, it can really bring great business value. And from a cloud environment, I mean, talk about security and scale and virtualization for a private cloud, a public cloud, or a hybrid cloud. We're trying to make sure that we're seen in the right light for all these key trends. And so, I think that's the most important thing, that the technology's brand new, but most importantly, the trends that are driving our customers' businesses were a healthy key part of that growth. Yeah, and, and, and you think about it, right? Uh, we have the fastest microprocessor in the industry. We have 10 terabytes of main memory. I, I, I do collaborations with other researchers around the world on uh, using the mainframe for global climate modeling, for uh, genetic sequencing. It, and, and if you think about like all those types of calculations in the past would take days and now they only take minutes. You know, they, you, could, you could crunch all this data in real time so that you could have insights. 
that allows you to do things that you couldn't do before. Yeah, we did some things in Z13 that probably nobody expected. There's a full vector instruction set in there, a full SIMD instruction set that was really put in for computationally intensive computing for analytics. So we keep putting more architecture and more hardware behind behind the mainframe to make sure that things really, really are fast, especially when it comes to analytics. Yeah, some of the global uh, climate modeling people I've worked with, when uh, I just gave them a, a Linux virtual machine on my mainframe, and uh, and uh, you know they, they asked me, what system is this running on? And I said, it's a mainframe. And they said, it, it runs faster than a Cray. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how powerful it is. Yeah, so, so Donna, I mean, IBM is so well known for innovation. I mean, big celebration, about 100 years uh, recently, big thick book on it. Um, I, I tell you, on the plane ride out, I've, I've been reading Walter Isaacson's The Innovators, uh, which talks about really the history of the computer, talks about how IBM uh, cr created uh, you know, so much of the modern computing. What's the role of IBM research today in really helping the really global innovation in IT? Uh, to, to transform our systems to not just compute, but to uh, but to uh, provide insights. So it, it's not it's not something that just does calculations. It's something that helps you uh, uh, live a more healthy life, live a more uh, fruitful life, help our our businesses prosper as well. All right, so Ross, I want to just give you the final word. Sure. We're getting the hook. You know, sure. people come away from IBM Edge, IBM Edge 2015. Uh, what should they think about Z? Well, hope they see that uh, we're very much alive, very healthy, um, important part of the global economy, again, and not just the transaction processing hub of the world that we are, but extending out into the mobile app economy with all of our cloud dynamics and of course with advanced analytics. So just want to make, make sure that they see how relevant Z is now, more relevant than probably any time in its more than 50 year history. All right, Ross and Donna, thank you so much for your time. Wish we had more. Hope we can catch up with you in the future. Uh, really appreciate all your customers that have come. Talked about really, you know, global deployments, you know, mission critical applications, and a lot of modern things happening on the Z's. So, uh, lots more coverage coming here from IBM Edge 2015. We'll be right back after this quick break.